On today's video, we're gonna give you a list of the best North Carolina cities to buy into if you're looking to own short-term investment properties. Hello everyone, this is Chris Morton, real estate broker with the Morton Bradbury Real Estate Group at eXp Realty in Raleigh, North Carolina. And so exactly what are short-term investment properties? So two of the common names you have probably heard of as far as short-term rental properties go are Airbnb and Verbo. It's an alternative to a hotel where people go and they want to do a short-term rental of a night or sometimes even up to a month or a couple of months. And there are people who actually buy these properties to rent out on this short-term basis and they can be quite, quite profitable. But there's some cities that are more profitable than others. So today's list is of seven properties in North Carolina and the way we pick them is based on seasonality, rental demand, the general regulations of the town, and overall the cost of buying the rental property. Now, this is not a conclusive list. There are other really great towns and cities in North Carolina you wanna buy in, possibly. Feel free to reach out to us. You can email us, call us, whatever, and we'll be happy to turn you on to some other options if these don't fit your needs. But Without further ado, let's get started with Elkin, North Carolina. So Elkin is about 45 minutes to the west of Winston-Salem. If you look at it on a map and you kind of do a cursory examination, you probably would think, well, why would anyone want to have a short-term investment property in Elkin, North Carolina? Well, location-wise, it is ideally situated because it is in the heart of the North Carolina wine country. North Carolina has really developed into a burgeoning wine destination in the top 10, in fact, of wine states in the United States. And the negative about the winery in North Carolina is they're really scattered apart. So you're doing a lot of driving to go from one winery to the next. It's not like in Napa, California, where they're all right on top of each other. So to do more than four or five wineries in a day is really, really tough. So naturally, the obvious solution to this is you want to stay overnight so you can go the next day to do some more wineries. Well, that's where Elkin comes into play. So again, it's centrally located in the area of the wine country. Best of all, the median home price in Elkin currently is sitting at $177,000 for a home, yay there. And the potential average monthly revenue you can get for a three or four bedroom house in Elkin is around $2,300 a month. The pros of buying a home as a short-term rental in Elkin are high demand, good seasonality, low local regulations, from the town and high, high affordability. And as far as the cons go, well, we really can't think of any other than the fact that it's fairly far away from all of the major cities. So it's gonna be kind of out to itself. So that is probably one of the only negatives we can think of about buying an investment property in Elkin. Next up, we have the city of New Bern, North Carolina. So New Bern is on the coast of North Carolina, about 45 minutes to the ocean. The big claim to fame of New Bern is it was the original state capital before the state capital was moved to Raleigh. So as you can imagine from all this, New Bern is a very historical town. It reminds me of sort of a mini Williamsburg, Virginia, if you've ever been to Williamsburg. It's a town of about 30,000 people. And again, very historic. Lots of tourists come here to explore the area and to see the original governor's mansion and the original legislature and all of that sort of thing. Really, really cool. The median home price in New Bern is currently sitting at $242,000. And the average monthly revenue you can get for a three to four bedroom single family house in New Bern is $2,500. And incidentally, we should stop and say, when we talk about average monthly revenue you can get from these properties, that is the average. So if you have a really amazingly cool place, maybe a historic house that has been dolled up to the nines and is super amazing to look at and Instagrammable, meaning the people on Instagram that are that have Instagram accounts love to go there and take photos. You can get more revenue for those kind of properties. On the flip side, if you have sort of a beat up, dilapidated property, you're probably gonna get less than the average. So when we say average, we don't mean the top line, we mean truly the average. So the pros of buying a short-term rental in New Bern are many, including very good location close to the ocean. 
The advantage is you're not right on the ocean, so you're less likely to have to deal with hurricanes as they come in because you're, again, 45 minutes from the beach, so that's a huge positive. Next positive, high demand. Because you're in a historic tourist area, you're gonna have a lot of demand to use your short-term rental investment property. As well, Newburn has really good seasonality. It's very, very popular through many parts of the year and very high affordability. You can buy some very nice properties for under $300,000. The cons of buying a short-term rental in New Bern, there's more regulations in the city of New Bern by and large than a lot of other places on this list. And again, the positive of not being right on the ocean is also the negative. You have quite a bit of a drive if you would like to rent in New Bern and go to the beach. It's not something you can kind of do in 10 minutes. You gotta make plans to do it. So that might detract some people from renting your short-term rental property in New Bern. Next up, we have Greensboro, North Carolina. And Greensboro is centrally located between Charlotte and Raleigh with a population of about 300,000 people. The median home price currently in Greensboro is $246,000. And the average monthly revenue you can get for a three to four bedroom single family house in Greensboro is $2,100. The pros of buying a property in Greensboro, great, great location. You're within about one and a half hours from Charlotte and one and a half hours from Raleigh. There is high demand for short-term rentals in Greensboro, mainly because the University of North Carolina at Greensboro brings in a lot of people, either coming to visit the campus, parents coming to visit their kids, or sports events, which would bring people in and they would need to stay in a short-term rental. Greensboro has really good seasonality all year round and profitability in Greensboro is considerably more than what you would see in Charlotte or Raleigh because mainly the homes are a little bit more affordable, meaning you can make a little bit more revenue, which is never a bad thing. A con of Greensboro, again, a little bit more regulation by the city than what you're gonna see in some of the other towns on this list. Next up, we have Greenville, North Carolina. So Greensboro is in the center of the state. Greenville is on the eastern side of the state. Population of about 95,000 people. The median home price in Greenville, North Carolina is $215,000. And the average monthly revenue for a three to four bedroom house is about $2,600. So the pros of Greenville, it is the home of East Carolina University, so you have a college town, really, really great. You also have a very, very robust regional medical center, one of the best in the state in Greenville. This is all gonna result in very, very strong year-round rental opportunities and very strong growth potential, mainly because homes are so relatively affordable in Greenville. So to sum up, positives are great profitability and fairly inexpensive homes. The cons of Greenville, there's really not any. It's a great, great town. People are gonna come in and want to rent short term, maybe because they have kids in the college, maybe they're exploring the college for their kids, maybe for one of the football or basketball games. And football, incidentally, is a really big deal in Greenville. Or simply because they're getting medical treatment or someone in their family is getting medical treatment at the hospital. So. All of this adds up to Greenville being a really, really good opportunity for short-term rental investors. Next up, we have the town of Spruce Pine, North Carolina. So Spruce Pine is in the mountains located between Asheville and Boone, North Carolina. And so as you can imagine, it's really, really popular for people who wanna take trips to the beach. No, of course not, to the mountains. Really popular for people who wanna take trips to the mountains. Spruce Pine has a population of only 2,500, so it may, possibly be difficult to find property in Spruce Pine, but the good news is there's a lot of other little tiny towns surrounding Spruce Pine where you may be able to find some properties. Median home price is only 215,000 in Spruce Pine, and the average monthly revenue you can expect from a three to four bedroom single family home in Spruce Pine is $2,400. So the pros of buying a short-term investment property in Spruce Pine, it's in the mountains in a really, really beautiful area. So obviously this is going to be a very high demand area. You're in the Blue Ridge Mountains and during lots of the year, especially the autumn time when the leaves are turning or in the winter when there's snow on the ground for skiing, 
there's a lot of demand. Another positive, you're only an hour drive to Asheville and Asheville has some really, really great restaurants, great tourist things like the Biltmore House and is really a great day trip destination for people that are renting in that Spruce Pine area. And another positive, there's relatively low cost to buy a home, especially when compared to the potential income you could get by renting that home out. The only con we could really think of why Spruce Pine might not be a good property is accessibility in the winter. Sometimes those roads can get a bit treacherous, so know that if uh, the snow got particularly rough, your renters may cancel out on you last minute. Next up, we have Sanford, North Carolina. Sanford is about 40 minutes to the south of Raleigh and is very much an up-and-coming area and is on the outskirts of the triangle. A lot of people are moving to Sanford and, that are working in the triangle area because it's so much more affordable and there's a lot of growth and in industry coming to Sanford. For example, Sanford is only about 15 minutes from the Triangle Innovation Point, which is where the Vietnamese electric car company VinFast is going to be manufacturing electric vehicles. This will add over 7,500 jobs to the Sanford area. And obviously that is going to be a big deal because Sanford has currently a population of only 30,000 people. The median home price currently in Sanford is $246,000 and the average revenue you can expect from that three to four bedroom single family house in Sanford is $2,400. The positives of buying a short-term investment property in Sanford are it's a booming area with that triangle innovation point coming there with VinFast, the Vietnamese car manufacturer coming. So definitely an up and coming part of the state of North Carolina and clearly has a very good future outlook and potential. Another positive of Sanford is it's only about a 40 minute drive to downtown Raleigh. So people could technically be staying there in your short term rental and go into Raleigh for restaurants, entertainment, that sort of thing. The cons of buying a short term investment property in Sanford is it is not a vacation destination. People are going to be going there because they're either working, potentially looking to interview for a job or something to that effect. They are not going there to explore the adventurous, wondrous parts of downtown Sanford. Next up is the city of Jacksonville, North Carolina, which is incidentally my hometown. Jacksonville is about 30 minutes from the ocean, from the beach. And it's actually about 30 minutes from two different beaches. You can be at Topsail Island in 30 minutes. You can be at Emerald Isle in 30 minutes. So really, really great location. Very, very close to the town of Swansboro as well, where you can have some really amazing seafood, really a great tourist area there around Jacksonville. Currently, Jacksonville has a population of about 108,000 people, and that is including the military base, Camp Lejeune, factored into those numbers. Because Camp Lejeune is literally in and around Jacksonville. The median home price for a home in Jacksonville currently is only $214,000. And you can expect to get the average revenue on a monthly basis for that three to four bedroom single family house in Jacksonville, you can expect to get about $2,400 a month. The pros of buying an investment property as a short term rental in Jacksonville is really great location. Again, you're super close to the beach, super close to a lot of tourist destinations. Another positive, Camp Lejeune brings in a lot of families to visit their sons and daughters that are, that are in the Marines on the base, especially during the holiday period. Another pro of Jacksonville, there's really a lot of nice restaurants in the town, especially considering its size, mainly because the Marines on base have a lot of disposable income. So you're gonna see some decent restaurants in Jacksonville, which means people that come and stay in your short-term rental are gonna find some nice things to do. And best of all, as a pro, homes in Jacksonville are relatively inexpensive. And the only con we could think about against buying a short-term investment property in Jacksonville is there is a few more regulations in Jacksonville compared to a couple of the other towns on this list, but not too terribly bad. Definitely something you would wanna consider. So if you're considering a move either into or out of the Raleigh area or any of the cities on this list, my real estate team and I would love to be your real estate agents of choice. You could email us at hello at mortonbradbury.com, call us at the phone number below or click on the link in the description and we'll get things started. Like and subscribe if you haven't already done so and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, bye-bye.